Fasting for Ramadan, notes from a spiritual practice, day nine, late afternoon. At the end of the day in the silence and quiet. Today I was around food a lot, but had no appetite. You are not supposed to tempt yourself in the fast because it's not a game. I remember Gandhi's brahmacharya experiments. Brahmacharya, traditionally interpreted as chastity, is now commonly translated as right conduct. Because right conduct, conduct that does not cause harm to others, cannot be limited to a single sphere of sexual behavior or to restrictions of any kind. For example, a fast from eating. Because in the fast, you are also not supposed to raise your voice, get overly emotional, talk badly about other people, gossip, engage in violence of any kind, smoke, take drugs, or swear, or talk coarsely. In other words, your relationship to the community and world around you has to switch from contesting and confrontation to acceptance and receptiveness. It is not that I have lost my appetite for food, but I find myself craving whole and healthy foods like brown rice, fruit, beans, and kale. There are two huge squashes on the corner that came from our garden. I want to slice them very thin and then make a curry with them. In a fast, one changes one's relationship to pleasure. Is pleasure merely instantaneous on the surface with only one experience in each, for example, in the taste of squash curry? Or does pleasure penetrate all the various levels in the body? Does the food continue to give pleasure at every stage of the body's process of eating, tasting, digestion, egestion, and then afterward, the ways the food that was taken in builds the body? I know I would always laugh when we would learn yoga poses that were supposed to aid with expelling matter from the body. But honestly, isn't how food leaves the body at least as important as how it enters? Just like in the film The Matrix, our bodies really are little processing plants for the physical matters of the earth and universe. Maybe the mind and what the mind thinks and how the mind speaks is also like this, contributing to or impeding the well-being of all creatures in the world. You free yourself from food during the day, but then you are supposed to eat at night. You free yourself from food maybe so you can actually and truly experience that food. I remember when I ate a tomato warm off the plant in Santa Cruz, California in September 2004. I felt like it was the first real tomato I had tasted in my life. And same for white peach I ate orchard warm on the island of Corsica in July 2000. Purifying the spirit in an impure body is a tough challenge. Purifying the body with our current food production and distribution system seems impossible. Fruit and vegetable are driven thousands of miles across the country and taste nothing like themselves upon delivery to massive grocery stores. And anyone who really knew where factory meat and milk came from wouldn't want to eat or drink these. Maybe brahmacharya should extend to our treatment of animals. Imagine what would happen if we ceased manipulating their sexual practices by technology in order to produce milk and meat for our consumption. We have an opportunity now to understand our body as a little ecosystem with its own environmental crisis going on. What we've done to the outside, we've also done to the inside. And I don't think we are going to be able to fix one without fixing the other.